We still don't have the date for Starship Flight 5 where they're going to try and catch the booster in these chopstick arms, also known as the Mechazilla, but Elon Musk has announced when he expects SpaceX to start launching Starships to Mars. Of course, this could be and probably is Elon time, but he's expecting that to be in 2026, which is not that far away, just about two years from now. He said, quote, these will be uncrewed to test the reliability of landing intact on Mars. If those landings go well, then the first crewed flights to Mars will be in four years. Now let's take a step back. Four years that humans would be on Starship, mm, I think that's a stretch. But you know what? If you don't set a goal and maybe even a deadline, then I guess you're really just treading water. Just take a look at history. This is certainly not the first time that Elon has set an ambitious goal and an even more ambitious deadline. So look, a lot of us have been wanting to hear more about SpaceX from Elon Musk. He's been very focused on politics lately. So what sparked this recent talk about Mars? Well, Bill Ackman posted on X saying, let's make America healthy again. Without our health and that of our children, we have nothing. And for those who care about our economy, national debt and deficits, there is no more important initiative. And if we back it up a little bit more, Bill was writing this in response to a new RFK Trump make America healthy again ad. But Bill wrote this and surprisingly, Elon decided to talk about SpaceX. He writes, SpaceX created the first fully reusable rocket stage and much more importantly, made the reuse economically viable. Making life multiplanetary is fundamentally a cost per ton to Mars problem. It currently costs about a billion dollars per ton of useful payload to the surface of Mars. That needs to be improved to $100,000 per ton to build a self-sustaining city there so the technology needs to be 10,000 times better. Extremely difficult, but not impossible. So this sparked a lot of interest with 57 million views, over 3,000 comments. People are excited to hear Elon once again talk about the mission to Mars and Starship. And then Elon, hot on the Mars subject, reposted that and quoted saying, the first Starships to Mars will launch in two years when the next Earth-Mars transfer window opens. So there's a specific purpose for this deadline, which I think is really great. He says these will be uncrewed to test the reliability ability of landing intact on Mars. If those landings go well, then the first crewed flights to Mars will be in four years. Flight rate will grow exponentially from there with the goal of building a self-sustaining city in about 20 years. Being multiplanetary will vastly increase the probable lifespan of consciousness as we will no longer have all our eggs literally and metabolically on one planet. And here's just a little bit of education because not everyone knows this. For a mission between Earth and Mars, the launch windows occur every 26 months. This is called a home and transfer orbit, and it also determines a fixed time required to travel between the starting and destination points for an Earth-Mars journey. Travel time is about nine months. And if you have a Starlink and you've looked at the router, you may have noticed this diagram. This is actually a diagram of the Earth to Mars home and transfer orbit. Okay, so I'll admit I am not the best cook, but I want to learn how we know that it's cheaper to eat at home and it's generally healthier. So I'm trying out HelloFresh for the first time. Plans change and your life can get busy. That's why HelloFresh lets you customize your delivery from week to week. You can mix and match lifestyle options to suit your needs like fit and wholesome, family friendly, quick and easy vegetarian, and more. All these good things take time. And everything can be tailored to your schedule by adjusting your delivery date and even skipping a week when you're not able to cook at home. Okay, that looks like half, it looks like catnip, honestly. <laughs> Your support means I can continue bringing you the content you love. To help out, use my link or code to subscribe to HelloFresh. And thank you for being amazing. And as a bonus, the menus also change with the seasons. HelloFresh has more options to support your wellness journey than ever before. You can dig into their biggest menu yet with over 50 dinner options and even more market items that suit any healthy lifestyle. Plus, start your day right this school year with free breakfast for life. You can get one free breakfast item per box when you're subscribed description is active. I'm actually very surprised that I made this. Like I said, I'm not very good at cooking. This tastes very good. 
and it's definitely a home cooked meal, so I give it a thumbs up. Click the link in the description or use my code and get 10 free meals and free breakfast for life. So yeah, Elon is truthfully gung-ho about getting us to Mars. I feel like if he had to pick one mission, only one because he has so many, it might be going to Mars. And of course, there are many doubters. A lot of people think that this is not possible. But right now I'm reading a book called Reentry. It's the sequel to Liftoff by Eric Berger. I'll be interviewing him about this as well. And this chronicles the journey of Falcon 9, which, by the way, was not always the workhorse of the industry and had a lot of problems in the early days. We've even seen it grounded on some anomalies over the past two or three months, which is very unexpected. And, and so space is hard, getting to Mars is hard, but SpaceX has already achieved so many amazing feats that were previously thought impossible. Well, I think it's gonna happen. In fact, there is a chapter in the book called The Cost of Mars, and I'll just read you a short little excerpt. This talks about the original vision to use liquid hydrogen and then to switch to methane. And I'll paraphrase, but originally Tom Mueller and Elon Musk envisioned using liquid hydrogen to fuel the Mars vehicle's engine. Liquid hydrogen is by far the most efficient fuel to burn in rocket engines, especially for moving through space. The spaceship can go farther using less fuel with hydrogen compared to other propellants. However, as Tom Mueller delved into his calculations, he found that methane, the main constituent of natural gas, might be a better option. Although it lacks the fuel efficiency of hydrogen, liquid methane is easier to work with and costs less to fuel a rocket. Moreover, it is denser than hydrogen, so methane fuel tanks could be significantly smaller. Smaller. And like hydrogen, methane could be produced on the surface of Mars, allowing rockets to be refueled for a return trip to Earth. Musk had Paul Wooster, who later became SpaceX's principal Mars development engineer, to check Tom Mueller's numbers. They were sound, and Elon agreed to switch to methane as a fuel for his Mars rocket. This was a huge decision, according to Tom Mueller, and then the question was, what would it take to get that stage back? And it's actually harder to get back. That's because SpaceX needed a lot of methane and liquid oxygen to fly home. To bring even a small amount of cargo and astronauts back from Mars would require topping off the rocket's tanks with more than a thousand tons of propellant and oxidizer. This is not a trivial amount. On Earth, it takes about 50 full-size tanker trucks to deliver this much fuel, and there are no tanker trucks on Mars or gas stations. Eric describes how we can use the Sabatier process, which is a chemical reaction to produce propellant on Mars, and it's theoretically simple. Even the ISS uses this Sabatier process to derive water from carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Methane is an unwanted byproduct of the reaction and is jettisoned overboard. The same reaction could be used on Mars while retaining the methane. The potential supply of fuel is essentially limitless. Mars has plenty of water ice to produce hydrogen, and the planet's thin atmosphere is more than 95% carbon dioxide. The problem is not raw materials, but the energy needed to produce propellant. Elon Musk has acknowledged this, saying the trickiest thing really is the energy source, which we think we can do with large fields of solar panels. But getting sunlight to those solar panels will be much more challenging than here on Earth. Due to its distance from the sun, the red planet receives less than half of the energy from the sun that Earth does. Therefore, it would take something like an acre of solar panels producing energy for two years to make the requisite fuel to come home from Mars. It's possible, but difficult. Most people flying to Mars on Starship will probably be taking a one-way ride. Now, most of the re-entry book focuses on the Falcon 9 journey, but this chapter titled The Cost of Mars, I thought had some interesting anecdotes. And many of you probably already know this, but not everyone is a diehard SpaceX fan. Uh, so maybe maybe you learn something new. By the way, on the same day that Elon was tweeting all of this information about the Mars timeline, he also shared this pretty cool render of multiple starships going to the surface of the red planet. And from render to reality, check out this amazing video from Lab Padre. Lab Padre captured the chopsticks in what appears to be a test ahead of Flight 5, which those chopsticks should be catching the booster. Lab Padre writes, Stage 0 has conducted a full launch to catch simulation with both the quick disconnect or QD arm swinging away and then the chopsticks performing their catch actuation test. Things are about to get unreal. 
But how soon will those things get unreal? Well, selfishly, I'm hoping that it's after October 18th or before September 28th. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I'll be out of town. But inside sources think that it probably will be actually next month in October, and it might be a little later in the month. Yes, of course, they've done lots of work on the chopsticks, testing for the catch, but we still need that FAA approval, and if they're going to actually catch the booster on the fifth flight, they need to make sure that everything is right. Some have noticed that the tower itself is twisting a lot when the chopsticks move, and there's a concern that these skates might detach from the rails. By the way, in the chapter, The Costs for Mars, one of the questions that Eric Berger tries to answer is, who exactly is going to pay for all of this? Well, while Elon Musk was busy chasing one crazy ambitious idea to spearhead the Starship program and build the world's first fully reusable rocket, he also decided to take on the nearly impossible task, which many had tried before, but to produce low Earth orbit satellite internet to provide internet for rural and underserved areas across the globe, aka Starlink. And Starlink just posted Monday, September 9th, during the recording of this video, that just 10 months after opening their factory in Bastrop, Texas, the Starlink team has built 1 million Starlink standard kits. The team is ramping production to meet the surging demand for high-speed internet around the world, not only benefiting humanity and people on Earth already, but this is going to be the cash cow that is going to help fund these missions to Mars. So everything comes full circle, or full home and transfer orbit? Question mark. Anyway, some of you might not consider this an update video. Maybe you already had an idea of the timeline, or maybe you think that Elon's timeline is completely unfeasible. Regardless, I'm happy to see him talking about Starship and focusing seemingly on the mission again. I know that we're in an election season, but not everyone just wants to see politics in the timeline. And with the goal of going to Mars and sort of a ticking clock to preserve the uh, light of consciousness for humans, I think think it's important to give us periodic updates about what's going on with Starship. If anyone is going to get us to Mars, I really do think it's going to be SpaceX. I highly recommend that you read the book Reentry. It's coming out later this month and I'll be interviewing Eric Berger in person. So I'm really looking forward to that. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. And again, unfortunately, I think that we will be waiting a bit for Flight 5 but good things come to those who wait. And of course, we want SpaceX to get it right. What they're trying to do is by far the wildest and most ambitious uh, flight that they have had. So how many of you will be trying to see Flight 5 in person? Let me know in the comments. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.